growing up in an Italian household. My parents immigrated to Australia, had some tough times growing up. My dad bought Italy with him, practically. Started saying that, you know, girls don't play football. My brothers uh, would go to training every Tuesday and Thursday and I just wanted to tag along. And he'd have to bribe me with chewing gum. He'd say, no, I'll just bring you back some chewing gum. You stay home. I started turning up and causing an actual fuss about playing. Be on the pitch, be beside the pitch, running around the club. Basically made such a nuisance of myself. I asked one of the coaches if I could play. And they were like, you can sit on the bench. And I was like, yes, yeah, sitting on the bench. She's like, yeah, this is so much fun. And I put on my uniform, it was 10 times too big. The boots were 10 times too big because of my brothers. And then, you know, lo and behold, with like, probably it was probably like one minute to go, in this practice match and the coach threw me on and I was like I've got no idea what to do I just know the goals that way and you defend that one just and I didn't touch the ball once but after that I fell in love with the game but you're eight years old you're playing in a boys team did you ever felt like you were excluded or were they pretty welcoming not welcoming more often than not it was the mothers of opposition teams that had the, the main problem with me. They would say, hey, they've got a boy with long hair. And I'm like, no, I'm actually good a girl. with the 90s. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with the 90s. Yeah, I had a mullet and stuff. And they were like, no, that's a girl. And then all of a sudden their facade changed because I could play just as well as the boys. And then all of a sudden you're showing up their sons and they didn't like that. Then you get banned from the competition. Yeah because it wasn't actually a ban. It was like they, they lost my paperwork, the form that my mum sent in three times. You know, it wasn't a, an official ban because there was no rule to say that girls couldn't play with the boys. So how old were you when you started playing again? 14 and what club were you at? 14, mum found me a club at South Melbourne at uh, Albert Park. And I still remember it thinking, wow, look at all these women. Not just girls my age, but women. Yeah. Uh, you know, 30s and 40s, and I was actually angry, to be fair. <laughs> angry for a moment that, hold on, I haven't been playing for, you know, four or five years yeah. because of people telling me that girls don't play football, when in actual fact, many women do. Yeah. I made my first national team camp at 16. It was a, a rude awakening, to be fair, because, you know, you turned up and you trained twice in a day, and I barely tried twice a week. It's a shock. It's I got a huge blister, bony spur on my foot. I could hardly walk by the end of the week, but it was my first dose of Australian football. And, you know, I loved it. Once I got to Australia, I just thought you stood up the front and you got your little accolade mm. and you said, you know, All-Star 11, thanks. And then you walked away and you did nothing. And I'm like, you can go to the Olympics? You can be an Olympian playing my sport? Yeah. And then that was it. That moment on, you trained, <laughs> yeah. you never stopped training. Yeah, I never stopped, it. I did. I recruited everyone, Jane Oakley, former Matilda. I'm like, what do I need to do? So twice a day, so much so I got injured and it was this numbness in my leg, uh, pins and needles, a real torture. So I went physio, doctor, ended up at the surgeon. Yeah. And the surgeon was like, you gotta stop playing. And I said, hold on, like, there's a position where you don't run, so I became a goalkeeper. You went to four World Cups. It's four, a yep. lot of World Cups. Yeah. It's a lot of service to Australia. 2003, I rocked up to my first World Cup. We didn't make it out of the group. And then the second World Cup, we made it out of the group. And then my third World Cup, we make it out of the group, but we lose to Sweden. And then we finally win our first playoff match against Brazil. Yeah, the way we do football, um, you know, we wear our heart on our sleeve, we wear the shirts down the street, um, our, ba our banners are flying high. The way we do a World Cup is going to be contagious. It's, um, it's going to bring a new influx of people that maybe have thought negatively about our sport, about women's sport, about women athletes, and it's just going to shine this bright light on the fact that women are capable. Yeah. We can draw the crowds, we can bring in the money, and you're going to watch, and you're going to want to watch every day. And that's the beauty about this game, is that it's anyone's game. You could be rich, you can be poor. Yeah. As soon as you've got a ball at your feet, game on.
Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.